let's design a filter and then use an L section in order to modify its behavior when the load is changed. We're going to be designing a one pole, low pass, shunt fed Butterworth filter, and we're gonna start off with the load and source impedance being matched at 50 ohms. The problem statement completely defines how the circuit's going to look. Let's first draw everything but our filter. I've drawn in the matched source and load impedances of 50 ohms. In order to fill in the filter, we just need to note that it only has one pole. A one pole filter indicates that it's going to have either one capacitor or one inductor in the circuit. We're told here that it needs to be low pass and shunt fed. That means that the first and only circuit element that this filter has is going to be a capacitor in the shunt position. That makes it low pass. If it were an inductor, it would have been a high pass filter. We need to find the value of this capacitor in order to complete our design. But if we go back to our Butterworth filter design rules and look at the chart, we see that order one is not on the table. I only have orders two to seven here on the table. So how are we going to find line one? Well, we can look down at the formula that was used to actually construct the chart. Let's take that formula and find out what that value of the capacitor should be. In this formula, N refers to the order. This is a first order filter. K refers to the particular circuit element within that order. We have only one circuit element here, so K equals one. We can plug in k equals 1 and n equals 1 to the formula in order to find the prototype value of the capacitor. I find that the prototype value of the capacitor is just 2 farads, but that's not going to be the value of the capacitor over in the circuit. To find that, I need to scale our prototype values. I already know everything that I need to know in order to find C. I have my prototype value, which is just two, and I have my corner frequency of 10 kilohertz and my load resistance of 50 ohms. C works out to be 637 nanofarads. The filter design is complete in part A. In question B, we have exactly the same circuit, except that the load has now been changed 500 ohms. The filter is not going to work as designed. How could we make it work? Well, one potential solution would be to insert another resistor and shunt in order to make the filter see something that looks like 50 ohms. Of course, the real load impedance would still be 500 ohms, but sometimes it's not good to use this solution because we wind up adding an extra resistor or additional loss into our circuit. So in this problem, we're going to be using an L section instead. How's the L section going to look? We're in a situation where the source resistance is less than the load resistance. Let's look at our L section design rules and see how the L section would apply here. We're going to be using the design up at the top because the source resistance is smaller than the load resistance. We can then see how the elements ought to be placed. We're going to have reactive element number one in series and reactive element number two in shunt. Now let's copy down the two formulas from the design rules. The source resistance is 50 ohms and the load resistance is 500 ohms. Therefore, I have everything I need in order to find these two reactance values. Reactance one is plus or minus 150 ohms and reactance two is minus or plus 167 ohms. We have two pairs of solutions. Let's look at both of them. In the first solution, X1 is positive and X2 is negative. That means that reactive element number one is an inductor and element two is a capacitor. If we want the L section to work right at the corner frequency of the filter, then omega is just going to be two pi times 10 kilohertz. Plugging in 150 and two pi times 10,000 into this equation, we find that inductance L1 is going to be 2.39 millihenries. Let's do something similar for reactive element number two, which because it's negative, we know has to be a capacitor. We now have a valid solution to the problem. If X1 is just an inductor and X2 is just a capacitor at these values, then the L section will work as designed. How about the second solution? In the second solution, reactive element one is negative. Therefore, it needs to be a capacitor. Reactive element number two is then the inductor. Using a similar process as in the first solution, we find that capacitor C1 would need to be 106 nanofarads and inductor L2 would have a value of 2.66 millihenries. Both of these solutions are equally valid. The key here is that you need to have one inductor and one capacitor or vice versa, not two inductors or two capacitors.